Do we have coffee? Should we have coffee for this? Let's Mostly see. I just want a prop, but I can hold this empty cup. I think I have that. I have a LaCroix. Ooh, I'm jealous. Can I, I, I have a, Yeah, I can get you a LaCroix. That'll be fast. Yes. I have so many things I want to say. I don't know. Are you going to edit this before we do Pillow Talk? Just skip over this part. No, I'll save it. I'll just say it to you in a second. Do you edit these? Yes. Okay. You then see I... how like I just recorded a lot of time of nothing? <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to the camera during that, oh, trying okay. to figure out what I was going to say. And oh, good. Well, I we'll, said, we'll, see what, we'll see what happens. It'll be nice to uh, be surprised. The first time I heard you, like, I really like listened to a song of yours was backstage at Summer in the City. It would have been 2014. 14. And you were like, remarkably brave in that you were like, sit down, I want to play you my new song. And uh, and I guess I had a little bit of a sensation of, uh-oh. And this is how I feel whenever I ask anybody to read my book. Because like <laughs> I'm like saying, you have to now spend a bunch of, like, it's even worse than listening to a song. And then if you, but that's not the, the bad part isn't, like, I have to like, read this freaking book. It's what happens if you don't like it. I, it's a, that's why I like get so like edgy when about other friends art because I'm a freaked out of like, yeah. what if I don't like it? What do I say? And like, it's not like I don't like, I don't, there are lots of things I don't like. Yeah. There are lots of songs I don't like. I've seen a lot of songs on from people who I know who have made songs on YouTube that I'm like, not for me. It was a little bit terrifying for you <laughs> to be like, situation. let's put Hank on the spot. And like, if I don't like this song, what the frick am I gonna say? Yeah. And then just being blown out of the water. So I think that that's part of like why you were able to do it because you knew the song was good. I don't even oh. remember what the song was. Ah. Do you do you remember what it was? No. Oh. Might have um, been Broken Record. I don't know. It pro it, that, that makes sense. I mean, that was early days and I am historically really bad at knowing what song's gonna be like one that stays with people. Right. So it definitely wasn't Make Me a Robot, which is the one people like from that record. <laughs> and it definitely wasn't Sorry I'm Not Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Your path as a musician, where were you at that point? I made that first record, Maybe Trap Mostly Troubled, summer of 2013. I always loved music and I always loved performing, but I just didn't realize that songwriting was gonna be an option for me. I'd never written a song growing up. Right. Um, and I never played an instrument growing up. The spring of 2013, my friend left his guitar in my car and then moved and then wouldn't tell me his new address. And I was like, I'm like, I want to send you your guitar back. Like, it's such a shame no one's playing this. I loved music, you know? And then I was like, I guess I could play it. Like, he's obviously not going to, either I sell it or I play it. Those are the two options. <laughs> Did you ever find this person again? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> are they okay? They are okay. I have okay. friends who are in touch with them. Yeah, I started like writing songs and um, I knew someone who did music, Seth Ernest, my producer, and I was like, I'm really simplifying this story. But um, I started writing songs and I was connected with him. And you were like, I'm just going to learn some chords. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, well, why not try and write some songs? And I started writing and then we started working on the album sort of in Seth's off hours. Mm -hmm. And um, by the end of the summer, we had an album. 2014, fast forward a year, the album's been out. It's interesting. It's like on one hand, I held that I really knew that I loved it and I loved music and it's what I wanted to do. And I was absolutely too terrified to say that out loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, oh, sure. It took me like two years of already having an album out to be, um, brave enough to be like, no, I do want to do this because, um, because I come from a YouTube background and, um, you can sort of be quick to be dismissed, I think. Yeah. And I did see that a little bit. My fans were very loving and very supportive, <laughs> but, um, yeah, for sure. Um, just being afraid of like, what if, what if I'm being foolish or what if I have like tricked myself into thinking this is a good idea? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a big fear of being foolish. Right. You're clearly not taking this as sort of a side project. No, not anymore. Now I'm like, this is what I do now. <laughs> that is manifesting itself in I think the quality of the of the songwriting, in the production of the album, in the production of the music videos, in the yes. sort of like visual identity of the whole thing. But but also in terms of like money, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> uh I I know that you're like not you're like not sitting on top of a big well of Scrooge McDuck cash. Oh no. 
And but I do know that this process is expensive. So expensive. Um, so what's been really cool is that um, I took last year off from making videos because I sort of <laughs> had a tough year. I went through a breakup. I went through a lot of things, and I just felt like I don't know what I could possibly say online. I have like mm -hmm. no perspective on any of these things I'm working through. But um, songwriting is such a beautiful way to work through that. And um, I took the year to uh, write and work on music. Finished the album, was not very online for a year, and I was like, great, now I have this awesome album. I want to get it out to as many ears as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but you've not been making YouTube videos, so how are you making money at all? Um, so I did two tours that year. Okay. Think. Is that right? Maybe I just did one tour. I did one tour sort of the way my income has worked for a long time is that I'll get like a big chunk of money from like one thing and then I'll make that last several right. months. Spring comes, I want to get the album out. I know that that's going to take like marketing, PR, strategy, many things that I don't have access to or the money for. So Yeah, I and also things that like people don't think of as part of the process. Yeah, absolutely. It's weird how, like realizing how much it, it, in any in any of this, yeah. how much of that that non music part goes into the music? So much. Yeah, yeah. I asked my fans like, "Hey, I'm relaunching Patreon. Here's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I need money to do it." And it's been pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, my Patreon's awesome. I think the first month I brought in eight thousand dollars, and then second month seven, third month six. One of the tiers is an only a one-time reward, so people right. drop down after that. And yeah, I'm not sitting on any of it. I'm very much living month yeah. to month because it all just goes right back into paying people to mm -hmm. um, try yeah. out the album. Like we were hanging out at VidCon, and I was like, "Do you want to go to Disney tomorrow?" And you were like, "Yes." Well, you didn't say yes. You said no. Yeah. And I was like, "Why?" And you were like, "Well." I can't. Yeah. And I was like, I can buy you a ticket to Disney if you, yeah. that's, so we got to go to Disney. That together. was so sweet. So wonderful. Um, it's true because like, yeah. although I could have maybe like made that work, I couldn't have gone and both enjoyed that right. expense because it's like, could this money be used in a wiser way? The, mo the most wise way for me to use that money was to get to hang out at Disney with you. Yay. <laughs> can we talk a little bit about Crush and how that's gone? Yeah. I want to start out talking about the music video because I think that's such a big part of the release mm -hmm. and also like a very capturing that song visually mm -hmm. it's done so effectively but also like it, it, it is it was done in a way that like clearly says to me this isn't a low budget music video. Ah oh, great I'm glad it appears that way. <laughs> Where did you rent a supermarket? Oh my okay so it's been Oh my gosh, I've, I'm so grateful. I have such a great like team of creative people around me. Mm -hmm. um, so we filmed in that supermarket from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Um, oh. So it's at night. All the people you see in the background are extras. Um, Isaac White from Big First Pictures, he pitched me the idea of what if we film in a grocery store. And I was like, I've always wanted to film in a grocery store, but it's seemingly impossible to find right. a grocery store that will let you film there. But he lives out in St. Louis, and he had a employee who used to work at a grocery right. store. Okay. So that all makes sense now. Yeah. And they let you get on the refrigerators. I'm actually not sure if Isaac asked if we could do that. Yeah. But it was nighttime. And <laughs> no um, one was there to complain about it. Yes. There was someone who was watching over us, but they were very like, cool, this is great. This is such an interesting shot to me. Because I look so tired. Because <laughs> you look like a person? Yes. Yep. Because you look like a person, yeah, and you look like a person through this entire video. Yeah, you're not like dolled up. You're not. You're not like wearing fancy, sexy clothes. Mm -hmm. That is really that is an interesting choice to me, and I want you to talk about it. Yeah, I, you're the first person to ask about that, although not the first person to comment about how tired I look. <laughs> <laughs> this opening shot was actually the very last thing we shot. <laughs> So you're just very so, tired. I've been dancing around a supermarket for eight hours and yeah. it's six in the morning. Yeah, but it's not that. I no, mean, like, yeah. genetically, I don't know if you can see in this lighting, but, like, I have very dark circles always. Very aware of, um, have gone through phases of feeling very self-conscious yeah. about it. You know, when we shoot, like, I'll always ask Isaac if I can see the footage back because I want to see myself and see, like, do I, mm -hmm. could I have done something better? Do I look awkward? Is my hair weird? You know, whatever. And we watch these two clips back and immediately I can see, like, my under eye circles are on display. I do look tired. You know, I saw it and I thought I can either ask to, like, change these lights, reshoot it mm -hmm. so I don't look that way. But I just felt like 
you know what, that's what I look like. And I... I also feel like it says to me, it's a level of confidence in the music, almost. And and also like a little bit of like, um, you know, take the polish off a little bit. Like we don't need everything to be super polished. Yeah. Not and also there's a there's a bit of that in the song itself mm-hmm. where I I can tell that it's extremely carefully produced mm-hmm. and as soon as I heard it I was like who's the name of your producer this is so good yeah um but in the in the way that the that those the like the noises the th- the throat clearings and the ugh hey. text like ugh. those moments are so good to me because they they seem very intentional but they also they're like an like a, an added polish that kind of takes away a little bit of the glamour and the glimmer. Yeah, I mean, my hope with this album and honestly with everything I do is that I really want it to be something I'm making for myself, mm-hmm. not something I'm making to get some kind of validation. I don't want to shoot for a target of... Um, you talk about this a little bit in your book. Uh, okay. You're allowed to talk about my book. So good, you guys. I'm like mad that I'm the only one I know who's read it because there's no one I can talk about it with. Um, but I haven't finished it yet, so we're going to talk about it a little bit later. This idea of, you know, if you can hit this target, you can be like, get a radio hit, be mm-hmm. some sort of famous pop star, some sort of famous and, artist. And also I think that in like the people who, you know, PR people, marketing people who think about this know that like, it's all it's all about like getting all the things that you have to add up to be to be big enough and pa- and only part of that is how good the thing is like only part of that is how good the song is and then there's like yeah. do you, who do you know and how what do you look like and ha- like how yeah. like what what foundation are you building upon with regard to previous work yeah and how is that considered by the broader music industry and like all that stuff totally. there's a lot in there but um, i will the say books, that every- books are the same way and if you can build up to be higher than everything else then you're freaking harry potter yeah but nobody gets to be harry potter and so everybody sort of fights to to build the bigger stack yes and within that like i'll also say that everyone also says regardless like all there's many elements that are very important but the most important thing is that the art is good that is true. Absolutely. Like, it doesn't matter how big your stack is if the, the song is bad. Exactly. There's no conversation to be had if the um, book or the song is no good. Mm-hmm. Anyway, going into the song, going into this video, going into, like, looking the way that I look in that shot. And, like, I, I'd like to maybe credit Megan Tan just a little bit for this. She talks mm. a lot about how it's just such a shame to live your life feeling... Um, shame around something that is many ways out of your control about mm-hmm. the how you look you know i don't i didn't pick to have dark circles <laughs> i i don't know it just it i mean it was a very deliberate choice it really felt like a moment where i saw that and the first thing i saw when i saw it was this feeling of shame and embarrassment right. like oh people are gonna see yeah. and then i was like i'm not just what i look like this is the emotion i wanted to have in that shot yeah. um and that's what i look like and i i like it i think it's yeah i think it's a a, a moment of who I was in that moment. And like the comments over and over again are just like... Cool editing. Every, every, well, and also like everybody loves it so much. I um, know. It's... Man, it's weird. Yeah, talk, yeah, talk about talk about uh, the, the level of success. I mean, it's my most viewed YouTube video right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel super happy, super excited. It's fun that a song that I felt like was really cool and really fun it's fun to have people affirm that and be like mm-hmm. i think it's cool and fun too so back in the day when i first found out who you were it was probably 2008 mm-hmm. maybe um and i found out about you and mitchell davis and maybe a few other sort of in that circle people in that circle at the same time and was like oh my god there are people who are making youtube videos who i didn't even know they existed and they already have big audiences um, and that was sort of the first time that it ever happened to me. Now, of course, it happens to me every day. Yeah. But how do you feel about where YouTube's at, generally? Um, uh, coming coming from that like sort of early time where there where there were these moments of like really feeling like we all knew, we kind of all knew what was going on, and we were watching each other, you know, with various levels of success. Mm-hmm. To it being such a big, diverse thing now. If I can remove my ego from it, I feel really kind of like it's exciting that something that was so niche and so like just such a small people Mm -hmm. has now become such a part of um like 
pop culture. Like right. people know what YouTube is, now, oh, yeah. and they know that people do YouTube. And they can like name time. YouTubers. Yeah, like, everybody can name a YouTuber, even if it's maybe not the one that we prefer they went named. Yeah, I don't know. I've heard Rosiana talk about how um, the internet and uh, social media is neither. It's really easy to build a narrative that it's like this bad thing, right. or that it's a super good thing. And she's talked about how it's a tool, yep. and a tool used in the wrong context is bad. And mm-hmm. A tool used in the right context is great. Mm-hmm. And um, where I think YouTube is really good and really special is that um, it provides people an opportunity to connect with other people going through shared experience when maybe you're living in a place like at your school or you're young where you're not having much connection so it can Mm -hmm. be a lifeline to community yeah and I think that's wonderful did it feel like that for you absolutely yeah Yeah, I was a really like I got into YouTube um right after high school and I was super super lonely and felt very isolated and um YouTube was a way to connect with um people and like be yourself and explore like who you were and like mm-hmm. who you were as a creative and I'm I'm really glad that was there for me. At the same time I think at some point it became a crutch and an excuse not to um, invest in maybe um, relationships that were available to me in the real world quote unquote. I want to be careful about that language because I don't yeah. want to make YouTube or internet relations sound less real. Because mm-hmm. they're very real. So I mean there's a long a long period of time between um, 2008 when you were making YouTube videos mm. starting to get views and then 2013 when you were starting to make music. Mm-hmm. Was that was those were those good times? I think that's a hard time in many people's lives. Sure, sort yeah. of becoming an adult is mm-hmm. hard. And I definitely think it was hard to do that in the public eye, Mm -hmm. even though it was our own microcosm. And like definitely some of the lowest parts of my life were in those five years, absolutely. And then at the same time, it was very cool to be at the beginning of something. And I think to understand, I feel like I understood very quick that I'm like, this is going to be something. And people are like, both as a career, I felt like I understood really fast people were gonna make money off of this, Mm -hmm. but also that it was going to be a cultural phenomenon and a part of the mainstream. Um, I did not anticipate it being a mainstream, I think, in the way that it's become. But sure. it's it's cool to know, like, for both of us, like, we're a part of that story. And that's that's neat. Do you feel that way? I absolutely feel that way. I, I've been thinking about that ever since the beginning. I was like, it would be really cool to be part of the dawn of TV. Yeah. But, like, we kind of are. Yeah. Um, we get to exert a little bit of that influence. and And also mourn it as it changes yeah also celebrate it as it changes but yeah. know that it's never gonna it's never gonna be the same thing for long yeah and to be okay with that oh yeah and well not always not always sometimes, <laughs> sometimes i am frustrated by it. like yeah. what okay means like obviously i'm not trying to like uh you know steer that ship yeah. it's far too big for that but yeah. um but i can be frustrated sometimes yeah that's fair. I guess I I tend to come I tend to come into that wanting to be like I'm okay with change <laughs> because I really want to uh, believe that about myself and um, I like the idea that now because it's more out there, more people who maybe it just wouldn't have crossed paths because it randomly didn't cross paths. Like it's like oh this is a cool thing I can do. Mm-hmm. It is strange now that um, maybe this isn't fair. This is only just a kind of an idea I had the other day, and maybe this was someone else's idea, and I'm just repeating it. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, it's interesting now that not everybody, but there is sort of a part of YouTube where the people who are very popular on YouTube, you know, are also the people who are very popular at their high school unrelated to YouTube and um, this social mm-hmm. media thing has now allowed like just the the same thing that would have happened to also happen on a much larger scale. I don't know if that's good or bad or anything, but it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, what it seems like to me, to put that in a slightly different way, mm-hmm. is that it was once on YouTube, it was kind of all like just the outcasts. Yeah. And now it's everyone. Yeah. And so, of course, the most popular people are going to be the popular people. Yeah. But you also have in the same way that, like, you can't say, like, what do you think about music? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is you can't say that about YouTube anymore. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it has that many genres. It has that many yes. kinds of people. We tend to, like, take the most popular thing and, and define 
the platform based on that. But that would be silly to say, like, who's the most popular artist in music right now and say that, like, ev- all music is Drake, you know? <laughs> It's amazing how many times I have the conversation with uh, strangers where people are like, what kind of music are you into? And I'm in a, into a lot of music, but I, I'm always also pretty quick to say, like, I like pop music. Because I do, and because people are so quick to dismiss it. So yeah. I, I want to be like, no, pop music's cool. And then a lot of people say to me, like, like, oh, I just like that it never talks about anything. And I'm like, that's not actually an accurate reflection of pop music really? at all right now. Huh. Yeah, I mean, there, there are certainly some pop songs that don't, like, Call Me Maybe isn't about that much. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of, But like, there's a lot of love songs, but there's a lot of pop music that's about a lot of things. I know. But it's that, I don't know. And then, I, who knows? I think people feel maybe cooler or more yeah. when you're critiquing something. So. Well, also, I think it's important for, for culture to have pressures toward people enjoying things that are not as mainstream yeah. because that allows for a greater creative diversity and then you get like otherwise everything stagnates yeah. and and also only one person gets rich yeah. um so i can't wait to talk about your book <laughs> uh movie stopped oh just now i just saw it happen okay did you get the add it rocks yeah that i think that i don't know why that happens it doesn't happen regularly it just <laughs> fuck. excuse me um but I was about done anyway, so we'll just have a gap of, mm. of no video there Great. for a second. Because it's Hank's channel. Who cares? I like Hank's channel. I love Hank's channel. I think channel. lots of people like Hank's channel. Oh, I'm not saying people don't care about it. I'm saying people don't care about the quality of the video. I see, I see. I'm not trying to make the best possible video on this channel. That's the point. Because otherwise, I wouldn't be able to put content here. Yeah, it's it's nice to have a place to play. I'm and kind this, of busy. <laughs> this feels like a place to play. That, I have so much to say about your book. It's I'm like, like Hank. I have so much to talk about. 